Welcome to Centauri Stir Fry. How the heck are you? Today we have a statue slash comic book room tour. Uh, this is where I do my videos, my comic book reviews, uh, hauls, statue reviews, and play video games and do the majority of my soul game. Okay, this room's pretty small, it's pretty dinky. Um, it, fortunately, I do have a sword journey. It's filled with comics and statues. Um, nothing crazy, it's just like I don't have the room for it all. So that's the point of this video though. It's about 2008. I've been collecting for a while now, and I kind of want to document what I have in here now because I plan on making major changes and reducing, or I should say consolidating or focusing you know, on certain things. It's going to be fun. Um, it's, it's a little room, and keep in mind, it's not a museum. It's not a museum at all. The lighting sucks. But I think it's a really cool room. I enjoy it. It brings me joy, and that's what it's all about. It makes me happy. It makes me like a kid again. So let's do it. All right. Okay, here we go. Welcome to Centauri Stir Fry. Here we go. Let's do this. Um, like I said, it's a small room, but it's got a lot of cool stuff. It's got some nifty prints, some Batman black and whites. We've got some CGCs up there. There's a Mondo poster. It's a ratty-looking... Uh, <laughs> curtain, but it keeps the sun out, that's the point. X-Men hardcover action, some more Marvel stuff. There's the DC wall, it's kind of where I do the majority of my uh, uh, comic calls, right in front of that. And over here is uh, one of my favorite walls right here. we got some awesome Marvel Titans. Alright, let's get into it. Nice. Okay, so this wall right here is usually where I set up in front of when I'm doing like a, like a statue unboxing or sword play. <laughs> Karate moves, something like that. Uh, and here's my favorite piece of all. Um, it's the Galactus maquette by Sideshow Collectibles. The base is like the size of a record player. Um, the skirt is kind of painted poorly, but he pulls it off. Um, I just like the color palette. I like the gloss effect. I love that grimace on his face. Look at him. He's just really annoyed and just kind of waving off Norad's, like, I guess, like a dark matter fart. And he's like, get out of here, man. Get out of here. <laughs> also came with, like, a Nova. Um, but I never used the Nova uh, Herald. But it's beautiful. It's easily my favorite piece. It's so big. It's, it's, it's huge. Like, 30 inches tall or something like that. All right, here's like, like a custom, a custom Jean Loop card herald that I made on a skateboard, a celestial skateboard engage. <laughs> and here's a here's a piece that every statue collector has, I think, at this point, and they should because it's one of the best they've ever done, one of the best sideshow pieces easily. The Thanos maquette. This is like the regular version. I'm a peasant. I'm a subhuman, but uh, I'm okay with that because it's beautiful. The chair is awesome. One day, I'll, when I move into that bigger room, um, hopefully this year. Um, yeah, I'm going to put them on like a permanent turntable just so I can see the back of that chair. It's freaking awesome. I love that thing. It's great. Calling the lights up. And here's like probably like the first big piece I ever got. And when I first got this thing, I unboxed it and kind of like uh, put it on the kitchen table. And my family just kind of pointed and laughed. They're like, what the heck's wrong with you? And I'm like, I know. Isn't it great? <laughs> I was like, man, it's great. You could take that sword and shield and actually defend your homestead with it. I mean, or, you know, you could go to like a Renaissance fair and you'd totally fit in. Um, it's still my favorite. They're making a new one, but this is my favorite, one of my favorite Hulks. Um, back here is a uh, signed print, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man by John Romita Jr. That guy is a really cool dude. And right here is a slightly racist poster, but I love it. It's the it's the original android uh, human torch with Toro, fighting a bunch of Japanese soldiers and a, a Zeppelin with a death ray. Look at all the detail in here. It's slightly racist, and you know, maybe the, like, the faces look a little insulting. <laughs> but it's wartime. Right? What are you gonna do? I think the artist was like Alex Schromberg or something like that. Still uh, really cool. I found that a long time ago. I never see that. It's like a really cool print. Here is a uh, like a tin that my wife bought me. It's Thor and Galactus. I need to track down that issue. I don't have it, um, but that's really cool. That was a really cool present she gave me. I love that thing. It's cool. It's just perfect behind that Galactus. Up here is a concert per poster um, by one of my favorite live bands, the Melvins. Signed by all the guys and an extra drummer. At the time, they were using two drummers. Great show and just quirky and fun. Nice guys. This is a uh, like a print I got in like an artist alley, and this artist was really cool. She was just doing a lot of mixed media stuff, inks, watercolors, collage style stuff, and doing a lot of monsters and politicians. I was like, yeah, I'll take that. And here you go, Ghost Rider, first Johnny Blaze, Marvel Spotlight number five. Big shout out to uh, Metarog, one of my favorite comic YouTubers. And here we go, uh, the monster by the same artist. I love that. Um, and over here, we have a cheap frame that uh, likes to reflect light um, with a cheap poster. It's one of those Marvel anniversary posters, but it's by Alex Ross. And man, uh, can he draw freaking Storm. Man, I got the hots for Storm, and he delivers. I think John Byrne is still my favorite Storm. And down here is a, a, a an X-Men lithograph by Joe Quesada, an artist I used to love as a kid. But man, you get in there deep, and it's like, man, he's not that great. But it's got Forge and Havoc on it, and you know how many posters are you going to find with Forge on it? That's just going to be kind of one of those things that you probably not get. You know, you only have you have one chance. <laughs> All right, so down here is my first 
uh, XM Studios, no, what am I first? But anyway, it's XM Studios Jean Grey. This thing is huge, man. It's really big. And it's got that translucent resin, so I kind of rigged up some lighting behind her. It doesn't look great because I need to figure out another way to do the wiring, but I still love that thing. Um, I just need to maybe hide those wires better. Over here, uh, X-Men 101, awesome Dave Cochran uh, cover. First Jean Grey, uh, Phoenix. And down here, a big book for me, Giant Size X-Men, number one. Freaking sweet. Prize possession right there. Over here, we've got the XM Studios cable, a quarter-scale cable. I really never thought they would do this. Um, I remember seeing a teaser a long time ago before it was painted, and I got super psyched, so I had to have that. My, probably my best high-quality piece down here is the New Mutants number one, or no, it's the graphic novel number four, but the first appearance of Cannonball, Sunspot, and the New Mutants. And over here, you gotta have that. <laughs> New Mutants, 86, first appearance of Cable. Down here, oh, look at that. we got Sideshow Collectibles. One of their best pieces, I think, as well. Martin Canal, Bane. It's a freaking bad Esser. And down here we got the first appearance of Bane down there. Avengers of Bane number one. I love that piece though. It's so huge and hulking. He's so good at it. The base could have been better, but whatever. I love that book though too. I got a lot of these books back before it was, you know, keys were huge. So I got pretty good deals on low, I guess they're not high grades. The first appearance of Azrael John Paul is awesome. <laughs> As the EX head. I dig that too. It's like kind of like a wrestler vibe, but it kind of reminds me of the animated series a little bit. So it's cool. And over here we've got uh, the Rogue comic yet, which I really like. I know that's not very popular with a lot of people, but I dig it. I like the engineering and I like the idea of it. And behind that's a signed uh, Francis Lanou uh, print. The guy's like an immortal little Japanese dude who does not age. He's <laughs> really cool. And next to that is a Wolverine uh, XM Studios, my favorite Wolverine. I think he's awesome. Um, I know a lot of people don't like that piece, but I, but I do. I think it's great. I'm sorry, the thing about the statue though is is it's cool. It's got like weirdly painted hair and sure his triceps collect testicles, but I still dig it. And behind him is the very first appearance of Wolverine, Hulk 180. Yeah, that's not gonna be a very popular opinion, but <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna stick with it. because uh, I don't have Hulk 181. So what are you gonna do? Okay, here's the uh, stack of D-tops and a bunch of DC is my DC area. That's usually what I stand in front of when I'm doing like a comic call or something like that. Maybe you've seen some of this in previous videos, but uh, I don't know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, man, you're a maniac. Why would you put all that weight on those D-tops? You're an insane person, and you're probably right, but so far for years, they've held up. But I get it, and I probably need to change that in the future. Um, but right here is the second Lobo print that Sideshow put out, and this is my favorite print they've ever done. It's the Lobo on Space Trike. <laughs> with the dog and you got his dolphins in the background he's got his hook hand up the cool Bisley hairdo and it's just like Emily it's everything you need to know about Lobo and that's your movie right there alright so now we have the, the Aquaman premium format by Sideshow um, this is the long haired bearded hook hand version the pirate version the hardcore version that you know Peter David kind of came up with um, but I'm a huge Grant Morrison uh, JLA fan so kind of I love that so even though it's not the best head sculpt um, the regular is just fine. Right here we have two lanterns, and that's my wedding ring um, that I used for like, you know, about a week or two. Um, I love the original OG uh, Green Lantern. I think it's awesome. I love this thing, man. It's great. Um, look at that ring there. The the EX came with a big uh, green fist, which was great. Um, but I love this version. I'm fine with it. Um, probably uh, a little undersized for some people, but actually, in all actuality, I think Batman and Superman are oversized, and... I think he's fine. I mentioned him from head to toe one time. I think he's around 18, so still my favorite. Next, the the prime one looks great too. And here's Sinestro, just a little. The base doesn't light up, but I just put a little light behind him. Uh, it's great. Look at his face. One of my favorite sideshow head sculpts. The guy looks like he would just tie you up and lay you down on a railroad track and and just point and laugh. And I think it has a lot to do with those eyes and that mustache. But it's a lot. It's awesome. It looks just like Ethan Van Skiver's artwork or Skyver. Um, and he comes with a big yellow. Uh, saw blade construct and I remember, still remember seeing like Cartel from Hell's uh, first time I ever saw his videos he did a review on that I was like yep I'm buying it so that's a big shout out to him he had a great channel um, love this piece though yeah love, love Sinestro one of my favorite villains back behind there is a green lantern green arrow uh, print signed by Neil Adams that's cool the guy's kind of a jerk but uh, it's okay you kind of have to put up with a legend sometimes you want a little memory and I have a bad one so <laughs> Here's, here's the Dr. Manhattan, kind of like my mascot. This is the DC collectibles before Watchmen. Like, he's close to 1.6, but not quite. Still a cool piece, though. 
and over here we have the Wonder Woman premium format. Not my favorite, um, kind of underwhelming. I got a really good deal on it because actually the spear was broken, so I just kind of had to fix it myself, but I, I didn't pay much for it, so it kind of completed my trilogy. Um, the new one looks a lot better, but I still dig it. It's just so cool. Um, behind that is a Krypton print. That's actually my wife's. I stole that. And right here is like my second premium format piece ever, and it's the original OG Man of Steel. Man. I want to talk about a steel though. I mean, this was like $3.99 back in the day. He's heavy, huge. The cape is beautiful. Really gives you that Alex Ross vibe. Just very stoic and just very. Man, this is a manly, manly piece. That's super man. Man. I love that piece. I love it a lot. The new one looks good, but for me, it's just classic. Uh, man. Just iconic swoops there. And it's definitely still remaining. It's one's, one of my favorites. Down here is a DC uh, Collectibles Designer Series. Um, based on the artwork of Francis Manipal, which is a, he's an awesome Flash artist, and I don't know how they did it, but the, and they translated his artwork perfectly, and it's a little one six scale Flash, but I love it. I love the running pose, and it's probably one of my favorite Flash statues. There's a uh, best uh, best ad for my daughter. She bought me that. I'm still living up for that. I'm trying to live up to that, so I'm working on that one. Uh, my son, my son got me that uh, really awesome tin. Up there's a Rick Buckler signed picture. Pretty cool. He passed a couple years ago, I think. My kids give me the best gifts. So does my wife. Got a good family. Over here we got uh, the original, not the original, the second variant. Uh, this is the modern blue variant of uh, Batman. The pre uh, premium format by Sideshow. Just an awesome piece. Epic. Just great. I love it, man. It's just I like it so much more than other Batman premium formats. And down here we have the uh, Batman Blackest Night Batman Pop. He's got scars all over his head where I knock him around a little bit. Just for funsies. We have a business relationship. Everything's cool. Over here we have the DC Direct uh, Batman vs. Croc. I think this is the second edition. Uh, it was all one solid piece. The first was blue, the second was this, and then after that they came out with like second and third or a third and fourth one. Where it actually broke up into parts. Um, but I, I like I like that. It's nice and solid, very well detailed. In the back here we have a sign print by Kevin McGuire. Uh, this is like your JLA Wahaha era with the uh, Booster Gold, Ted Cord, Guy Gardner. It's great. And he was a. I really expected him to be more like Booster Gold, jovial and fun, but no, he was more like Guy Gardner, kind of a jerk. I'm surprised we didn't get along, but we did not. And over here, we have a, a very disappointing, but still cool, uh, Sideshow Collectibles Killer Croc. He's got a really bad scene. Yeah, you know, like when I'm playing video games, or whatever, and I look up, uh, he looks great, but when I come to the side, you can kind of see that seam. But if you look underneath him or above him, he looks freaking awesome, um, or behind him or whatever. But the problem is just the size. He's undersized, and that's the issue. It's not really the gap, it's the size of him, if you ask me. And coming down here, we have a really cool Power Girl premium format. A really, It's really, really well done. Behind that is her first appearance, the All-Star uh, comics. And I, I just, when I look at her, I'm like thinking they're never going to do another piece like that, where it's like voluptuous and, you know, She's got big boobs. That's what she's known for. It seems like a lot of the stuff they're coming out now, they're a little more athletic. Maybe uh, more tone. But she's just all, you know, she's all, all woman. <laughs> so I just don't see them doing that. With licensed Marvel and DC pieces, anyway, I've noticed they become a little, you know, not as voluptuous. And then here's a Huntress. Um, this Huntress is awesome. Behind her is the uh, first appearance of Helena. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, one of the best face sculpts I've ever seen. A very nice piece. The base is kind of like, eh. The base is okay. It's not my favorite. Um, but lots of detail in the body. Yeah, there's the comic. The Huntress. The first appearance of the Huntress. Not the first Huntress, but the first, that version of Huntress. There's the penis book behind that. And then we've got the Joker pre premium format. Like, still, to, to, to this day, I think it's the third piece I ever got. One of my favorite statues. It will never go anywhere. It's awesome. The mixed media, the face sculpt. The attention to detail on this thing is just classic Joker. It's awesome. I believe this was Martin Canal as well, uh, the sculptor, and one of my favorites. Behind that is a, kind of a current book, uh, just an awesome cover though. It's Jim Lee. It was uh, Justice League, and there's the EX Joker head, just kind of put back there. I like to switch them out every once in a while, but uh, it's almost creepy. It's almost too creepy for me. Awesome clown base. And there we go. There's some, a model of my teeth. I don't have dentures, but uh, I did have some work done on one of my teeth. <laughs> it's really none of your business, but I'm going to go ahead and show that too. Over here is the first appearance of Harley Quinn and Continuity. Uh, that's a pretty famous cover. Iconic there. Alex Ross. Pretty cool to get that. And over here is the Catwoman PF. You got a couple of uh, recently, I guess they're modern, art and covers for that uh, uh, 
current cat one run, which is really good. And here's an awesome statue. Another one that's not real popular to people, but look. I look at this thing, I'm like, man, no, this is Catwoman. She's got the smirk, she's confident. Um, she looks like she works out, like, a lot. Like, maybe tons of squats. Like, you know, she probably has her own Instagram, but she's not stealing, like, jewels. She's probably got an Instagram account somewhere showing off her workout routine, and that's that's Catwoman. A lot better than the new one where she looks like a little kid. Here's a couple um, six-scale pieces. One is the uh, DC designer, Dark Knight's Metal Batman. I got a review coming to that very soon. And behind that's just like a random, um, you know, metal. So there's the Code Vakia New 52 Deathstroke, which is really awesome. My wife got that for me. I think it's great. And behind him is the first appearance of Deathstroke. And that's uh, Teen Titans number two. One of my favorite books as well. He's just a great villain. And over here we got another one of my favorite pieces. Another one that will never leave. Um, you know, there's other Lobo statues coming. But for me, this is one of the best. One of the Sideshow's best, period. Definitely their best DC piece, in my opinion. I think this is Martin Canal as well. It's freaking awesome. This exclusive version, so he's come, he comes with that little Ghost Rider like head, and he's lighting his cigar. He's got that huge gun, the dreads. He's got a switch out where it looks like kind of like uh, the Beisley cover number one. And behind him, there's the dog. Oh yeah, he's cute. They were separate. They were sold separately, <laughs> but it's so cool. It's epic. Behind that's the Omega Man. That's the first appearance of uh, Lobo. Before he was cool though. He was okay, but it wasn't great. I love Lobo though. Right here is one of the first big pieces I ever got, like a bigger statue. The Dark Knight Returns on Justice Pony, <laughs> Frank Miller action. This is the uh, first version. The second one was like a limited black version, but uh, then after that they came out with one that was kind of like, had a couple pieces, whatever, he took his head and cape off. Behind that is a graded uh, Dark Knight Returns number four, I believe. It's the uh, Superman-Batman battle. Over here are a couple of... Uh, NECA pieces my wife got me for uh, Christmas, I believe, a couple years apart, but yeah, she got me the Danny DeVito, which, man, look, if you're an 89 fan, you like Danny DeVito, look at that face, they nailed it, and this was amazing, this was one of my first pieces, too, she got me this a long time ago, man, I love that thing, it's spot on, I think it's better than Hot Toys, and I even think it's better than the, uh, the premium format, down below is uh, another earlier, oh yeah, there's my 1989, I got that in the theater, the opening night, Still got that bad boy. I love it. Down below is a uh, old school DC collectibles piece. Man, it weighs like 50 pounds, but it's painted horribly, but I love it. It's Dark Knight Returns. It's Frank Miller. Um, but man, it's, statues have come a long way since then, for sure. It's a journey. Over here we have the Harley Quinn premium format. Uh, just freaking cool piece, actually. I'm just still amazed by how they got that suit on her, how tight it is. There's the gap between the legs. I mean, they got this thing like super, super tight. And the base is really cool. There's another gift from my wife. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> Lots of gifts. My family does good gifting. They gift. Yeah, it's still great. My my personal favorite, Holly Quinn. Uh, so far. I like it better than the new one that's coming out. It's just my opinion. Um, down below is a uh, Joker and Harley Quinn bombshell. Where, like, kind of like the, the riff on the uh, World War II famous photograph after the war ended. But it's really kind of rapey. Like, he's definitely getting raped by her. Like, she, you know, he, she does not have his permission. We'll just go with that. It's still a funny piece. I love it. I think it's great. I believe that's the first edition. I think they came out the second. Behind that is the Batman Adventures number 12, the first appearance of Harley Quinn. It's a pretty big book for some people. Over there is the uh, Harley Quinn that my niece uh, drew and colored for me. She nailed that. Good piece, though. A little Harley Quinn set up there. Let me just waddle on. I just gotta waddle over a little bit. I'm on my knees. And then, okay, now you got the redheads together. Okay, so now we have the Poison Ivy, the original. I think the base on this and the sculpt on this is awesome. It's in the top five of DC pieces from Sideshow. It's great. It doesn't really matter what color you get. If you get the green one or the plain one or the EX or whatever. It doesn't really matter. I think you should get this if you're a Poison Ivy fan. It's it's awesome. Another one of those pieces that I don't think they're really going to make a lot of. Look at them. You know, she's kind of gifted. She's, she's voluptuous. She's got to have a, she's got one hell of a figure. And I just don't think they're going to do that anymore because they're kind of going for like a little more bossy pants kind of uh, uh, athletic vibe for the ladies. <laughs> Here's the original Batgirl, which I think has some, one of the best face sculpts. I just really, it looks alive to me. It looks real. It looks like a real person's face. Uh, it's great. And maybe the cape isn't that great you know but like this it's an awesome suit a classic suit all the wrinkles are really well done behind that's a you see the killing joke but like the wrinkles in the legs and everything it's great the boots look cool the base is simple and classy and 
I love I love both these pieces. I think it's great. We got the first print Killing Joke back there. Uh, one of the best books of all time. <laughs> Brian, Brian Bolin and Alan Moore get together. I mean, that's just that's that's gold. Yeah, just some rebirth back there. Next is a piece you probably don't really see in a whole lot of collection tours or room tours, but it's the Lex Luthor premium format. Uh, one of the greatest villains to ever live. Uh, the greatest criminal mastermind of our time, Lex Luthor. Here you go. Um, I love it. It looks just like, to me, it reminds me of the Frank Quiley artwork from All-Star Superman. I think it's great. I love the power armor. He's got the, the chest actually lights up. It just went turned on. Um, but he was super big. He's heavy as hell. And it was double boxed. Slideshow really put some care into this. And I, it really, really impressed me. And I was like thinking, how many times will we see another Lex Luthor statue? So I was like, nope. I got to do it. I got to get it. I love it. I love the piece. I love the attitude. He's just like, I'm a gift to mankind. You're welcome. I'm helping you. <laughs> you know, he's got that vibe to him. Pink probably could have been a little bit different. The base really stinks. It's uninspired. And it's just like, okay. Here's the first appearance of his power armor and fancy robotic Brainiac. And then we've got the Death of Superman. And then we've got the absolute version of Final Crisis. And just some random, cute, dark side down there. I'm just kind of trying to cover the wires, to be honest with you. <laughs> that still looks cool. Okay, up here we got some signed CGC books. First we got Infinite Crisis number one, first Ted Cord Blue Beetle signed by George Perez. Then we got Spawn number one, signed by the Todd Father, one of my prized possessions. I love that book. Then we have Saga number four, signed by Fiona Staples. We got a Lion Cat statue. I'm a Saga freak, I can't help it. And then we got the first appearance of Swarglor, but that's not why I bought it. I bought it because of Eric Larson's signature. And then we got Amazing Spider-Man number 37, the first appearance of Norman Osborn. Got Stanley to sign that for me about three years ago. It was a weird experience. Right, the guy right in front of me had like 17 copies of Spider-Man 300. Wore his wrist out, poor guy. But when he saw that book, I know it was spark lit. He's like, I wrote this. I just had that feeling. And then down here we have uh, the Kick-Ass uh, print signed by John Romita Jr. And down here, another prized possession of mine is the Ethan Van Skyver Flash commission that I got. And that dude is awesome. We're talking about Uncle Ethan, comic artist pro secrets. And over here we got the Doom. This is the second version of uh, the of Doom. The second premium format. Probably not as good as the first one. <laughs> but still a great version of uh, Doom and very awesome mixed media. Uh, the base sucks. There's some random comics down there. And we got a Luke Skywalker coaster. See, look, I do love Star, I, I love Star Wars. I just hate The Last Jedi, so I always keep that coaster out to remind me not to watch that on Netflix. Now we got my PlayStation 4, and like any collector, a collection has, uh, you gotta have a, a makeup brush to dust, and so Dead Man stole that from my daughter, and there you go. That's my uh, stolen makeup brush holder. <laughs> and, okay, here we go. Here's what we got. We got some more Marvel. We got uh, the XM Studios classic Thor. I love this piece. I don't use the spinning hammer, but it's that's awesome for me right now. It's my favorite Thor. I know Sideshow's classic Thor is supposed to be everyone's favorite, but I dig this one. I think it's awesome. I think it's near perfect. And now we have the uh, Sideshow Collectibles Daredevil. I was going to sell this, and it's never really supposed to be in there with them. Um, I was going to sell it, and I took it out to inspect it and kind of check it out. And I did a review on it, and I was like, no, nah, it's too cool. Back behind that is, like a, uh, uh, for no particular reason, it's the first appearance of Bay Ray Bill. And now we have one of my favorite pieces, um, and but it's mainly a character appreciation. I love Ben Grimm, the thing. I love Old Blue Eyes. He's a sweetheart. He's adorable. Back behind that is a recent pickup. It's a uh, Fantasy 450. And then uh, pick up uh, my Christmas present from this year or last year. My wife got that for me. Fantastic Four, 49, first appearance, first full appearance of Galactus. Big book. Awesome stuff. Down here is the first, the very first quarter scale statue I ever got. This is the first one I ever opened up. Um, man, it was glorious. I opened it up upside down. His back was showing. I put my hand on it. I was like, this is ridiculous. I laughed out loud. My wife walks by. And she was just so mad. It was, yeah, I'll never get rid of it because memories, you know? It's like the first piece that really pissed off my wife. And I'll just, I'll keep that forever because that look on her face was just priceless. But I love this piece. It's it's freaking awesome. Spikes, kind of got like an S&M uh, vibe to it. Um, the scale is like whatever. It's the movie, so I don't really know. Yeah, I know he was a lot bigger in the comics, but... I mean, he's a lot bigger in the movie than he was in the comics, but still one of my favorite pieces. Heavy as heck, too. Over here. We got the Wooly and uh, Sabretooth combo, which a lot of people have, which I don't blame them. I think it looks great. Um, I actually pre-ordered the Sabretooth. Wolverine I bought later, but this Sabretooth is like a redo of like kind of like the you know 90s Jim Lee version, but I like this one. This is the one where he, uh, you know, he fights 
Iron Fist. Look at that face. He's about to have like a... <laughs> He's like, Man, look at that. He just has head, veins. I mean, come on. He's either going to crap his pants or something. I don't know. But the claws are vicious and you know, they got this little sheen over him. The hair is great. I love that saber tooth. It's my preferred saber tooth. I don't think I'll ever need another one. I, it's perfect for me. I love the classic suit. The snow looks good. Um, I really like everything about it. I think it's great. It's the EX version. There's two heads for this. Both heads look great. Um, yeah, cool stuff. Um, the dog bowl base sucks on it though. I hate that design. And as well with the Wolverine, I don't like the dog bowl base. The, the Japanese bridge is cool. And he's cool. I, I like this. I actually got a really good deal on this. The minute they announced that new Wolverine, I kind of grabbed this pretty pretty darn cheap. And it's cool find. It's the EX with the with the Muramasa blade, but he needs hair. He's got no hair. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Wolverine is hairy, okay? You can't get away with that. Um, but I look past it. Down below is another Francis Lineal U print. Um, Wolvie versus Sabretooth signed uh, from a con. Um, that dude is awesome. He just he just looks like he doesn't age. I'm pretty sure he's an Asian vampire. Okay, over here is just a quick look at what's going on on this side of the wall. We've got the current... I, my, probably my most current statue right now is the Magneto. A bunch of awesome X-Men on this. I pretty much have everything except for two of them. Here's a current Mondo print. This is the Infinity War print. I think this is kind of open-ended, so I, I know a lot of people have that. It's still pretty cool. The the blinds there are kind of silly looking because I put that black stuff just to keep the sun away from those books on top. Because I've got some awesome books up here, so I don't want to like it. I don't want any sunlight to hit them, you know? So up top, let's get into it. Up top we have uh, Fantastic Four number 52, first Black Panther. We have Fantastic 448 for Silver Surfer. Then we got the first Inhumans. Awesome cover. Jack Kirby. I love that. Um, then we got the first Dragon Man. Dragon Man's adorable. And then we got the first Black Bolt in comics. Here we go. I love that. One of these days, I need to get that XM Studios Black Bolt statue. I think it's great. And now we have uh, the first full appearance of him. Got that. I actually, I have a video for that, but I forgot to put it out. So I'll do that. And then we have the first An Origin of the Eternals, some more Jack Kirby. Then we get over here, I kind of just kind of went a different direction away from Jack Kirby. We have uh, the first uh, Prowler. Uh, look at that cover, 78. Man, the colors are awesome. Love that Ramita cover. And then we have My Prize Possession, Amazing Spider Man number 129, the first appearance of Punisher. My top book in my collection. I sold like a Punisher statue to get this, and it's definitely. I've had a Punisher tattoo since I was like 16 years old, so that's definitely one of my favorite things in this room right now. I love that book. Skill Kane cover. I love it. Over here, I think we got some more Gil King in action. Iron Fist. First Iron Fist. And the very back here, we got first Luke Cage. Nice for me to cover. I've actually got two copies of that, and I love that book. That cover is so awesome. I love those books, actually. Those last three are some of my favorites. Okay, so now we have a Mondo Infinity War poster. High, super high quality. It's the only one I've ever had or touched. And it's a really nice poster, but I'm just not sure. I have an X-Force, <laughs> uncanny X-Force poster that I almost like better. I'll throw in there. Um, here we go, we got the Sideshow Collectibles Magneto Maquette. Um, probably, I think, my last new statue. Uh, I got more coming, unfortunately. Great piece. Um, I love it. It's it's great. I love the presence of that thing, and it's freaking sweet. I got him, on, I got him sitting on top of the, one another one of my favorites in my collection. Just because I got such a good deal on most of these. This is my little collection of uh, the X-Men Omnibuses, so I think I have everything but... Um, things that weren't like I guess reprinted and I'm missing like the the wedding of, of Cyclops and Jean Grey and the Marvel Now Legion but I have everything else there was a used bookstore those two right there X-Men number one and two that was selling they have these sales and this guy was kind of he came in there and he must have sold everything he had because I would just go in there every weekend and find this stuff and I would get like buy one get one freeze on this stuff and some of it was used some of it wasn't it was amazing I was getting such good prizes on it so X-Men number one, two, classic X-Men, Uncanny X-Men one, two, and three. Then we've got some filler books in there because they haven't really reprinted everything in Omnibus form yet. So kind of fillers. you got Fall of Mutants, the Inferno stuff. The Inferno stuff, uh, that used to be hard to find, but I got that at use for bookstore for nothing. So that kind of started my whole X-Men collection by just by getting good deals on that. And I love the prologue of Inferno, the, the Australian saga. Man, I love that Australian stuff. Mark Silvestri is my favorite all-time X-Men artist. Down here we got some more. Um, X Force. Um, I got Astonishing X Force at that store for cheap. That new X Men omnibus is actually signed by Grant Morrison 
And Frank Wiley, that's cool. I got the Onslaught, Apocalypse, blah, 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 all that good stuff. Uncanny X-Force, it's a great read. One of my favorite um, X, X runs. The best Deadpool I've ever read. Uh, Wolverine number one. All, I think all the Wolverine on this is so far. Realm of Kings, you've got some Summer's action. Cosmic Goodness, Fantasy 4, 1 and 2, Ecstatic, and the most awesome Axe of Vengeance crossover. I love the idea of that. The Punisher and Doom fighting. Yeah. All kinds of goodness. Wolverine Mandarin. It's DC Encyclopedia. I think underneath that couch is just a bunch of ammo. <laughs> or my futon. And there's some custom pillows. My wife actually made me some Star Wars uh, pillows. Pretty sweet. We get up here, and we got some commissions, and we got some more signatures. These are like 11 by 7 Punisher prints signed by Mike Zack. And then we have the Batman Black and White section. We're getting pretty close. This is almost done. Yeah, some more commissions and signed goodness. Yeah, pretty close being done. Look over all that. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Okay, first we got this awesome Doom watercolor by Carrie Nord. That was pretty sweet. And one of my favorite commissions, seriously, we got <laughs> New Warriors, Do uh, Nova, by Mark Bagley. So awesome. And then over here we've got another Carrie Nord, like watercolor kind of thing. A Daredevil is so cool. Look at the, like, in the back, the negative space with like cities. It's freaking sweet. We got this Etrigan by Dave Johnson. I was like, hey, can you do, have you ever done Etrigan before? He's like, no. It's like, would you do it? I guess. Please? He's like, all right. And it turned out great. Like, he did not want to do that. And then surprising the heck out of me was Dave McCone doing a, I think it's Dave McCone, Mike McCone doing awesome uh, Nightcrawler. And no, here's a set of the Olympic series. Um, I think they've been recolored a little bit. They look a little different than the original books, but man, just iconic, sweet Punisher goodness. All signed by Mag Zek. I got this whole little set here at a convention one time. Oh, I loved it. I love that stuff. Those were in a closet for a long time. Finally got to hang them up. And I went to Dave Johnson again. I was like, hey, uh, would you do a commission? He's like, yeah, sure. Would you do Dark Side? He's like, uh, I guess. He did not like my suggestions. So that one didn't turn out so great. He was in a hurry. <laughs> it's still cool, funny. It was a fun conversation. There we go. The uh, the Dark Knight Returns uh, by Code of Kia, my favorite Dark Knight Returns statue so far. Um, and then we got Bruce Tim. Uh, got the Bruce Tim, what? Harley Quinn? Lieber Mayo Joker? Jim Lee Joker, Greg Capullo Joker back there, and then my one single hot toy, which is the Jack Nicholson uh, mime version back there. I love that thing, and that's my only one, but man, they are damn impressive. But man, I, I fiddled with that thing for like six months, I swear to God. <laughs> I just can't pose them, man. I get I get too anal. It took me three months to do Magneto's cape, or not Magneto, but, but Doom. I'm still working on Magneto's cape. Here we have the Arkham Asylum uh, Batman Black and White statue. It's pretty cool. I'm going to do like a little small review on that, maybe one of these days, if I don't quit YouTube. I'm not thinking about it. It's great, it's my favorite Yard Arkham game. Costume is cool. We got the Mike Mignola, Gotham by Gaslight. Not very popular, I dig it. And we got the original OG Mike Mignola. I love, that's my, probably one of my favorite pieces in here. I know I keep saying that about everything, but I really mean that. And then here, <laughs> they made like three versions. There was like two, there's, that's, there's that one, two white versions and a six scale repainted. But uh, I still love that. Um, yeah, it was the Code of Ikea Killing Joke. That's awesome, too. He's missing the gimp. He came with a little gimp. Remember those little gimps that were like kind of his henchmen? It's in storage. I need to bust that out. And then we have uh, For Jake by Norm Brayful. Well, this is uh, uh, another prize possession. This is a signed print by Norm Brayful. 2004, I met him in like a small convention that was like in a, uh, like in a, mo like a hotel. And, man, dude was super cool, super charming. Everything that you would ever want out of your hero when you meet him. Here's a Neil Adams signed Batman black and white statue. And man, was he a jerk about that. And then we got the, <laughs> I can't get, say that enough about Neil Adams, he's a jerk. Here we go, we got the <laughs> Alex Ross, I love that piece too. I recently acquired uh, uh, Dave Masichelli, year one statue. Jonathan Matthews, we've got two statues by uh, designed by Joe uh, sh Kelly Jones, King of Fear guy. We've got Jim Perro. We got George Perez. We got my first statue ever right there in the middle. That's the uh, Darwin Cook. I think it was. I had to check that out. I started collecting it in 2012. That's sad. We got another hero. And there you go. Dorn Brayful. And then we got on the end Sean Murphy, writer and artist of White Knight and Punk Rock Jesus. Check that book out. Okay, over here, last shelf with Batman Black and White. Black and Whites. We got the John Romita Jr. Uh, All Stars Batman. Whatever. We got the Frank Quietly Batman and Robin. I love those two. We got the Jason Babak. One of the one of my favorites as well. 
Uh, yeah, Greg Capullo. And we got Tony Daniel Batman. And then on the end here, we got the Jim Lee Nightwing. Really cool piece. I love the vibe of that. We got Sad Bats by Jay Lee back there. And then you got the awesome Jim Lee. I guess like his hush version. Mm. All right. So we come down here. We got some prints. Uh, there's a mad glare going on here. But that uh, that's XM Studios Gene Gray print came with the statue that was shown earlier. I really wish the statue looked as good as the print, but it doesn't. <laughs> Another one. We got uh, the Rogue by Adam Hughes that uh, I wish the statue looked as good as that, as that print as well. And then we've got Black Cat by Amanda Connors. She's a very cool lady. I met her at a con. She's very cool. I love that print too. It's very classy. Then we come up here to the last just kind of miscellaneous X-Wall. Kind of jerky. Wow. Uh, we got your Guy Fox Anonymous mask, right? Alcoholics Anonymous. Yeah. Hacking the internet. Trying to find them damn Russians. And over here, we've got uh, my first CGC book. This is the uh, New Mutants 98. This is the first appearance of Deadpool. Gideon. And I don't care what you say. Copycat. Or uh, Domino. Sorry. Whatever. But it's signed by Rob Liefeld. That's cool. Over here, we have uh, X-Men 213. From, uh... Signed by Chris Claremont. I had a brain fart. That's when Psylocke uh, joins the team. And over here we have the very first appearance of Gambit, signed by Andy Cooper. Pretty cool. He did that cover. Okay, and down here we have a really uh, another hero that I met, Art Adams, one of my favorite artists of all time. He was kind of just doing like a like a repro, one of his classic X Men covers. I love that he signed that. Really nice guy too. Over here we have X Factor number 24, first appearance of Archangel, but it's also signed by Stan Lee, uh, Walt Simonson, Louis Simonson. So you got the writer and the artist and the creator on that book. I thought that was pretty cool. I like that combination. Uh, very special book to me. Walt Simonson rocks. Over here we got classic X Men number one. This is a sign, well, it's a print, but it's signed by Art Adams as well. And it's a repro, you can kind of tell. It just does, you know, classic X Men number one cover. Is one of my favorites of all time, and you can tell his style really changed, but it still does a great storm. So, and down here at the bottom, we just got some randomness. We got uh, the first appearance of Dazzler, their first X Factor, whatever that means, and then we have the first Mr. Sinister. Okay, all right, guys, that's the end of the video. But first, here's the most embarrassing part of the video and the room is my comic closet. Now, I have probably 20 short boxes in storage, but those are mainly runs. Um, these are mainly uh, keys and like image runs actually, the image comic runs, and we have about 18 boxes of short, short, 18 short boxes in here, and as you can see there's some pops back there, some saga pops, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but I'm like a, I'm a saga fan, so I, I kept buying everything saga. Up here we have some, uh, just random vinyl, Diana Ross, We've got some New Warriors action over there, because I love the New Warriors. Uh, and then we have uh, Batman No Man's Land, Fury Engine, Alice Cooper, some coal-esque goodness, man, some hardcore music. Um, and then come down here, and uh, yeah, just some random crap. Underneath that is a bunch of ammo, I think, for the apocalypse. So yeah, just to give you an idea, that's embarrassing, but I need to get organized. Um, yeah, there's even there's even CGCs underneath the clothes. Um, but yeah, okay, so that's going to do it for this episode of Centauri Stir Fry. Remember, uh, Magni was right, okay? You guys take it easy. See you next time.